It's quiet outside Chesborough Fieldhouse now. At least for a while, the basketballs have stopped. But inside, nothing but lots of activities throughout the 1997-98 season as the LG Maroons had an incredible basketball season, the best ever in the 98-year history of Elgin High in basketball. 30 victories, just two losses. There was regional championship right inside. There was a sectional championship at Arlington Heights and John Hersey High School. That great super sectional game up at Northern Illinois in DeKalb. Finally, on to Peoria. And for the next 30 minutes, right here on Jones Intercable, we will present what we call the miracle on Maroon Drive. The Miracle on Maroon Drive campaign would see Jim Harrington's team win 20 in a row to start the season. Early in the year, the second weekend, as a matter of fact, would stand out as on Friday, December 5th, the Maroons defeated longtime conference foe St. Charles and on Saturday, December 6th, knocked off last year's number two team in the state, West Aurora. Led by the scoring of junior and co-captain Sean Harrington at over 22 points a game, Elgin was 13-0 when they took on crosstown rival Larkin on Friday, January 9th. Harrington stepped up his game and scored 29, including these two just before halftime, moving Sean past scoring-wise, a Maroon who became an NBA performer. To Harrington. Let's see if Harrington can pass Flynn Robinson with five seconds remaining. Harrington popper from 14, yes! Into the history book, seventh all-time leading scorer as he hits that 14-footer to end the first half. The Royals could not burst the maroon bubble on this night as Elgin won 61-46. to And when the season was over, Sean Harrington would be the second leading scorer of all time with 1,446 points, trailing class of 87 Mark Baugh by just 90 points. The Maroons, before they would face the Royals again, would nearly lose to conference foe East Aurora, coming from way behind to knock off the Tomcats 62-60 on Friday night, January 16th. They would play for a Sunday for the first time ever in the 98 years of basketball for Elgin in the Hoops in the Loop contest. That was on Sunday, January 18th, and they knocked off Brother Rice 58-49. The following Saturday, it would be what Jim Harrington would call the best game of the season to date as they defeated the Flying Saxons of Schaumburg. This time at the Fieldhouse, the final was 71-46. Every Maroon had a great game, including number 32 senior Brent Gooden. The only regular season loss of the campaign happened Friday, February 6th against conference opponent Wabansi Valley. But that did not take away the enthusiasm of the second meeting of the year between 20-1 Elgin and the Royals. Number 21, Marcus Small with a 6'4 sophomore who turned 16 late in the season, had 10 rebounds against the Royals coming off the bench and would start the rest of the season for Elgin. Larkin stayed close for most of the game, but Elgin would win by 12. Teams met back on January 9. It was 61-46 Maroons. Westbrook with the basketball. Around that pick by Penrod, Westbrook leading towards the hoop as he always does. He puts it up and in. Nice play by James Westbrook. Started at the top of the key just on this side or close to the uh, uh, half-court line and decided to take it in all himself. Sean Harrington shouts out the instructions you can see. Let's see what he does with it here. Right up by David Tola. Sean's taking it all the way himself. Swish. Easy as that. Can you map that out? Harrington with 23. And before the contest was over, Marcus Smallwood would give the crowd a thrill. Oh, Smallwood, the jam. That the monster slam from the block monster right there. A big dish from Sean Harrington. That's what's got the Elgin Maroon fans off their seats right now. He missed earlier, but he jammed that one through. You see the fandom right there. It's 58-46 as play continues. Air ball on the jumper by Pace, and the Maroons will bring it up, leading by 12 with 3.08 remaining. Devastating enough to get a jam, but also to have your team come down and throw up an air ball on the next possession. Also after this game, another young sophomore guard, 6'1", Marcus Howard, would become part of the Maroons' starting five, joining Harrington, Gooden, Smallwood, along with senior number 33, Matt Ludeman. The first three off the bench now, and for the run to Peoria, would be Michael Roth, number 11, a senior guard, number 25, 6'4", senior Jimmy Ebert, and 6'3", senior Dustin Ackman, number 30. The Maroons would finish the season 25-1 and, and prepare to host Lake Park on Tuesday, March 3rd for their first regional game. Playing Lake Park for the second time in 96 hours and for the third time in 17 days, the Lancers were no problem for the Maroons as Elgin never looked back and rolled past Lake Park by a final tally of 88-49. to that led to the following Friday, March 6th, and a regional championship celebration. For Brent Gooden and seven other seniors, it was their final home game. Elgin beat Schomburg for the second time this year. Let's take a look and see how it was done. 
The Maroons were led by Sean Harrington, who had 26 points, and by great defense, which held Schaumburg to just two points in the third quarter, stretching a four-point halftime lead to 13. The Fighting Saxons never got any closer in the fourth stanza, as this Maroons fast break from Harrington to Marcus Smallwood would lead to a score, and eventually a 58-43 regional championship and a chance to put on brand new shirts. The regional championship was the 35th in the storied Elgin Maroon basketball history and the eighth time for coach Jim Harrington at the school. Elgin with this victory had the second most wins in the history of a single season at EHS and with the sectionals slated for the following week at Hersey High School, it was on for more games for the 27-1 Elgin Maroon team. The sectional at Hersey High School in Arlington Heights saw Elgin come from behind by nine on two occasions on Tuesday, March 10 against number five seed Hoffman Estates to win 68 to 58 and they came from behind by eight on Friday March 13th as Brent Gooden scored 30 to knock off Rolling Meadows by a final tally of 80 to 65 and to become a sweet 16 team for the first time in eight years and advanced to Northern Illinois University for Tuesday March 17th and super sectional play against Naperville North. Now the super sectional was exactly that super a great seesaw game that went back and forth early in the first quarter before Naperville North behind their all Conference selection senior Henry Dommerkant took a lead for good in the first half. There, Chipetta comes into the frame. There's Henry with a dribble drive. He's going one on one with Ludeman. He'll take a long popper. It is good. It's three. What a nice look at the basket there. Dommerkant with the three, and it's 14 10 Huskies. Harrington in a crowd, force it. No rebound there. Dommerkant. Henry might go coast to coast. He will. Can he put it up? He does. He's got five points. Huskies by six. Fast pace first quarter. Marcus Howard in the lane. Force it up. Shot. No. Rebound taken down by Smallwood. Puts it back up. Naperville North would lead at the half 33-27, but the Maroons would come back with a 21-9 third quarter spurt, while Marcus Smallwood would have his best varsity game ever with 24 points and five block shots. See at Chick Evans Field House, yours truly Jeff Myers, along with Jim Hawkins as we bring you exciting play involving the Elgin Maroons and the Huskies of Naperville North. Again, the Huskies shooting an incredible 45%, but more importantly, Elgin shooting 31%. The Huskies have got the six-point advantage, 33-27, and we're ready for second-half play. Jim Harrington, hands folded right there in front of the maroon bench as Geppetto will bring it across the timeline. Huskies up by one. A thriller right here at Chick Evans. Brought to you on Jones Intercable. We appreciate you being on board in Elgin, South Elgin, and Naperville. A three is not good. A rebound by Smallwood. Smallwood outlet to Ebert. He surmises the field dribbles once goes to Harrington. Harrington across that timeline. It's Sean time now. Watch this. Harrington out on top. Harrington left of the lane. Spin move to Ebert. Ebert shot. Yeah. Oh, beautiful by Ebert. Nice speed from Harrington. Elgin leads by one. 40-39. Land of three. Chapetta. No, sir. Too hard. The minute he released it. Rebound Ebert. Ebert. Outlet. Sean. More Harrington time now. Right side. Sean. Lane. Sean. Popper. Harrington. Rims it. No. Sport. Small one. Yes. There you go. There you go. Getting a little teamwork here. Uh, even though uh, uh, he's not making the baskets here, we got Smallwood coming in to fill in, make the difference, and watch the Elgin crowd come alive now. And you see some of the Maroon fans there as they filled up their side of the gymnasium here at Chick Evans Fieldhouse. They sold 2,200 tickets and more walk-up tickets than that. We zoom in and see some of the Maroon coloring, some of the Maroon faces in the cream and Maroon colors. 2-10 remain third quarter. We'll probably go down to the wire here at Chick Evans in super sectional play. The winner going to Peoria. The loser after a successful season missing the glory of Peoria. Friends out on top. Double team needs help. He'll get it Torres. Torres land of three. This one's good. Oh, yeah. Phil Torres for three. He had a beautiful look at the basket. Nice follow through. You could tell it was all the way in. Got it. 42-145. Third quarter remaining. Harrington time again. Sean left of the lane. Shot. No. Rebound. Plotty. Outlet he will. He throws it away. He does. Gebby didn't have possession of it. Didn't know what to do with it. Maroons get it back to Ludeman. He can hit from three but won't hear. Tippy toes a little bit, does Matt. Gets closer, takes a rare shot. He will make it on the shooter's roll. Matt Ludeman for two. I don't think I've ever seen Matt Ludeman take a shot that close. No, never that dribble drive to the hoop for the kid. 
Averages about five points a game. Had 13 in the most recent game. Torres thought about a three, gets closer off balance. Marcus Small with the block. He's the all-time leading shot blocker in EHS history to Roth. Knocked away, tracks it down. Skip past Ludeman. Bounce it to Smallwood. Spin move, Marcus shot. Good. Smallwood. Double figures times two with 20 points. He's on fire. Maroons by four. 46-42. Cross that timeline with 45 seconds remaining in the quarter. It is Gebby. Gebby to Frizz. Frizz doesn't shoot much. Guarded by Ebert. Goes to Gebby. Out on top now to Torres. Back to Gebby who's running the point with Chipetta on the bench. 30 seconds in this quarter. Maroons by four, 46-42. Elgin trailed by six at the half. Down low to Henry. Will stop. No. Oh, 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 by Smallwood. Holy Two blocks God. by Smallwood. You heard Jim Hawkins call it. How oh. many times at the high school level do you see that? Final shot time for the Maroons. This place will go nuts with a basket here by Elgin. Harrington out on top. Harrington right in the lane. Harrington down deep. Smallwood, yes! That's the quarter right there. Smallwood has 22. Elgin has the lead by six. 48 to 42. Again, the third quarter has belonged to the Maroons. The Maroons would go on to win despite a 4 of 20 shooting night for Sean Harrington, who did have nine assists and eight rebounds, and foul trouble for Brent Gooden, who played only 12 minutes. Jim Ebert came off the bench and had 11 rebounds. So the Huskies throw in the towel. They realize the Maroons are headed for Peoria for no easy assignment to take on Whitney Young, number two rated by the USA Today, the entire nation, and of course, number one in Illinois, the Dolphins of Whitney Young. You might have seen them against King. Here it is. The Maroons are going to play in Peoria. They have won a super sectional. They are an elite eight team. They will play Whitney Young on Friday. They have knocked off Gaperville North here on this Tuesday night by a final tally of 69 to 58. We're back here with the man of the hour, Marcus Smallwood. You were, yeah, you got a fan club here, young man. Yeah, I think so. I think I made a few fans, but I'm just happy that we're going down on Friday. Oh, it was an incredible game for you. Back-to-back -back blocks, and that's not even talking about your offense. Yeah, well, when he came in on, the, when Domacrans came in on those two dunks, and I saw he's going to come in again, I had to make a statement. So I, I had to let everyone know from right there that if they're going to come in and score, it wasn't going to be easy. So you I became the all-time shot blocker tonight. I'm yeah, that's what I heard. It's, it's, so it's kind of nice because that's usually what I, I take pride in doing is blocking shots. If I score, I score, but I want to like block at least about five shots a game, so that's my goal. You've had some problem with an ankle, and, but that didn't bother you at all, did it? No, it was. Just, we, I didn't get a chance to practice this week, but then when I came out here today, our trainer fixed me up, fixed me up real good, and I was just able to play, and I was just so excited. I just went out there and played my heart out. You were doing that routine in the warm-ups. It was like I'm hobbling a little bit, but as soon as the game started, you were ready. Yeah, I didn't want to waste. They told me I have to waste a lot of energy and just come in because if I had 10 good minutes, they didn't want me to waste it on warm up. So I came in there and I just tried to do the job. You had 10 times three good minutes, incredible minutes, really. The, the offense seemed to flow around you with Sean being covered up nicely. When did you realize you'd have to become much more offensive minded? Well, I think this is really the first game that I just tried to take it to the best whenever I saw eyes open. Your game. So Thanks. You're great. getting congratulations as we talk right now. Dr. Yeah. Power is coming in. That's great. Yeah, and then when I saw Gooden went out, and I saw that because I knew how much it, when he left out, when he went out, how much that took away. So I just tried to step up and get the rebounds and get the and try to work on my post game because on Friday I'm going to need it. So I just tried to work on it tonight. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Your, Whitney Young is the assignment on Friday, uh, of course. You have everything to gain, nothing to lose when you go up against those guys. Yeah, I've been watching them all, all season. It's, it's going to be a dream just to play with like Curtin Richardson because that's one of my favorite players in uh, him and McGee. Those are my two favorite players besides Kevin Garnett in the world. Yeah, I just I love them and I just wanna I just wanna be able to play to say I play with Quinn Richardson. Even if I don't even if we don't win, I just wanna go out there and give it our all because we deserve this. Listen, our kids, you know, it's a total team effort. It's not a one man show. It's it's sixteen kids battling it out every day. The feeling when you you get to the super sectional, which you've, you've done many times in your career, but to win that game and to get a chance to go down state, that's a wonderful moment. Isn't it's it? the greatest, one of the greatest moments in your life. Uh, you're going into today. You're so far and you're so close. You're so far away, though. I mean, I can I feel for Mark Lindo. Uh, does a great job with that team. You get this close and you're just a step away from what it's all about. And now you're going to go home tonight. And you're going to second guess yourself to death. I know the feeling's happened to me before when I was at Weber. Fortunately for me, since I've been at Elgin, we've done it three <laughs> times in a row. Now we've won it. So.
it's a big ball game. It's a pressure game. But I had the kids just sit and talk to each other and before the ball game, just talk about what it was like growing up, you know, and in the driveway and knowing someday that every kid in the state of Illinois wants to get to play in the super sectional. And we just tried to relax them a little bit, and they were pretty good about it. Nice job, Coach. And we're going to show you some of the Thursday morning, March 19th pep rally at Chesborough Fieldhouse. The send-off for the team when the miracle on Maroon Drive continues after this. It was optional, but there was a pretty good house on hand to get a chance to say so long to their favorites. As the Maroons got ready to go down to Peoria, a pep rally took place, and our Jones and our cable cameras were on the scene. The 7 10 a.m. pep rally would see Coach Jim Harrington thank the faculty, fans, and students for their great support. And Coach would say that in his 25 years of coaching, no team had a bigger heart than this current 97 98 Elgin Maroon team. Also speaking would be senior Michael Roth, senior Johnny Holden would be inspirational, and junior Sean Harrington. And the famous Elgin drumline would perform with basketball senior Joe Heaton helping out. And then it was on to Peoria. The Peoria experience was exactly that. Great experience for next year's Maroon team as they should be back once again. This time, the Maroons took on the favorite Whitney Young, second best team supposedly in the nation, best in the state of Illinois. They went on to win the championship. It was the quarterfinal on Friday, March 20th. It was telecast live back to Elgin on Fox Sports Chicago. Number 34 for Whitney Young, Quinton Richardson, scored the first seven points of the game. Brett Gooden had a two-pointer for the Maroons, and they trailed early 7-2. to two. Other Maroon highlights in Peoria included this long three from the senior Matt Ludeman, made it 11 to 7, and this basket by senior Dustin Ackman that made it just 13 to 9, the Maroons down at this point. But that's just as close as Elgin could stay to one of the best teams in the nation as Whitney Young would win 68 to 50. Another highlight included double figures for young sophomore guard Marcus Howard, number 22, who had 10 points in this quarterfinal game. Elgin's finest moment in the game takes place here as Sean makes a three and we see mom, Mrs. Harrington, watching in the stands. And then seconds later, Fox Sports Chicago's roving reporter, Yvonne Simmons, talks with Carol while the game goes on. Hey guys, there are a lot of father and son combination stories we've heard. Today we have our own in Jim and Sean Harrington. And I'm sitting with Carol Harrington, who you guys pulled a tough draw on Whitney Young, but you said you guys are so proud to be here. Oh, we really are. We're just delighted to be here. We never dreamed we would be 30 wins at, at, at the end of the season. Um, too bad we couldn't have played somebody else, but we're just thrilled to represent our school. You've been sitting in the stands for 13 seasons, and how special is this that Sean is playing with his son right now downstate? With his father. Since the boys, both my son Dusty and Sean were uh, knew about basketball. We've been bringing them down here to the tournament, and we've always felt that They've always said, we'd love to play down here, Dad, for you someday. We'd love to be here and play and not just be in the stands. And here they are with their dad, and it's the most exciting thing. My, my oldest son is here, and my son's, other son's playing for his father, and I couldn't be more, more excited. Oh, I will. Hi, everybody. I hope you're uh, studying hard this morning and having a good time this afternoon. Have a great spring break. Another nice highlight for the Maroons, number 25, senior Jim Ebert, going over a 6'9 man to lay one in. Our Jones Intercable camera captured some of the March Madness experience in Peoria. It was sure easy to see the about 1,000 Maroon fans showing their true colors, knowing they would be back once again in 1999 in Peoria. Now, after the contest and the game ended and the big scoreboard showed a 68-50 final, there was that sad moment knowing that eight seniors for Elgin High would never suit up again as a Maroon. In the press room, Coach Jim Harrington would tell everyone this. Yeah, quick synopsis, we got beat up pretty good today. Uh, that was a great basketball team. Um, they quit, Quentin Richardson proved today what a great player he is. We had a very difficult matchup with him no matter what we tried to do. Uh, it really hurt us on the boards. I don't have the final totals in front of me yet. I'm kind of looking at them, but I know they did a great job in the class. And just a situation where we had very difficult matchups and tough situations to uh, do what we wanted to do. We never really got into a sink in offense until the fourth quarter. That was too late in the ballgame to make a run, but uh, give them a lot of credit. Uh, Henry does a great job at the point, and of course uh, Richardson just took over today and just had a monster ballgame. I'm proud of our kids. It's a great uh, season for us. It's hard to for them to face anybody at this particular point because they're, you know, they're down in dumps even though it's not a, a two or three point game, it still means a lot to these kids and 
no one really wants to talk after the ball game today, so it's kind of hard to bring them up here. But um, we've had a great year. It's been a great run, and we're just exact. I guess a little different, maybe mentality with young, wanting to be the number one team in the country and having state championship aspirations. And our goal was to go further than we did last year. We accomplished that. We just happened to run into maybe the best team in the tournament first game, and they took it to us. And there's not a whole lot you can say except. They were definitely the better basketball team, both offensively and defensively, and they did a great job on the boards. Well, yeah, because they took the ball out of Sean's hands, and that was very important. We normally wouldn't be able to get the ball back into his hands, but today we didn't. And, uh, right, they took the ball out of his hands with their pressure. Not that it really bothered us, but it forced other kids to bring it up. And we just didn't have enough patience once we got it across to run our sets. And we tried to do some things one-on-one, -on -one and that broke down, and we made some turnovers, and we were only getting one shot in the first half. And when you get one shot against them, they better be a good shot. And they weren't a lot of good shots, and uh, they were getting every rebound then, too. Sean's walking around the room now congratulating the seniors and on the, being with them. And Smallwood and Howard are still young. They're only sophomores. So it'll take a growing process. But yeah, we would, I mean, we'll set our goals high again next year with three starters back and uh, three of our top four players back. So we're looking forward to it. I mean, it's just been a great run. We'll enjoy it this year. And then come summertime, we'll talk about next year. I just think we got beat by the better team today. I mean, I don't. That, there's not a whole lot of things you can say. I mean, you got to give them all the credit in the world. They outplayed us. Uh, they outscrapped us. I thought we hustled for loose balls. We just didn't do a real good job on the boards. And they were able to dominate the boards. And they were able to run what they wanted to do. And we weren't run, able to run what we wanted to do. And you got to give them credit because uh, that's why they're one of the top teams in the country. I'd just like to thank the local press from our area for all their coverage this year. It's been a wonderful year and. Even though we lost today, it's still a great uh, ride down, uh, we call it the Miracle of Maroon Drive. It's just been a heck of a year, and no one's ever going to take the 30 wins away from these kids. And uh, best record in the history of the school, and uh, it's something they're going to be proud of. And I know they're not right now, but they're going to be able to reflect upon it this weekend. I know that they were one of eight teams to get down here, and it's just been a great joy ride for us. It's too bad it had to end like it did today, but just got beat by a great team. And we're so proud of the kids and the effort that we've got from them all year. Well said, and thank you, Coach Jim Harrington. We'll be back to wrap it up, and the miracle on Maroon Drive continues after these words. We take one final look at the field house and say so long to a wonderful season. As we said, the best ever for the Elgin Maroons basketball-wise. The 30 victories was two more than any other team. I think Jim Harrington said it best in what you just saw with the postgame in Peoria. Three of the top four players are back for next season. So the 98-99 campaign looks to be pretty darn good for the Maroons. And they got to the first day in Peoria this year. Next year, day two in Peoria, and finish somewhere in that top one, two, three, four with all the great kids coming back. Sean Harrington will be a senior. Marcus Smallwood, you saw how devastating he was, of course, in the super sectional play. He'll come back as a junior. Marcus Howard, a great guard as well, will be a junior. So exciting it was this year. It'll be even better, one would think, for next season. We want to thank everybody involved with our long season, of course. Uh, Jim Harrington, all his help. My radio partner, John Priggy on WRMN. The great cast and crew we have here at Jones Intercable. It has been a delight to bring all this to you in a special that we call the Miracle on Maroon Drive. We'll see you next year.